I have been developing a multi-layered master material system for quite some time and I want to show you how using this workflow actually makes your jobs a lot easier and faster than ever before. So here you can see I have a simple table. Now this table is using my layered material and it has my layered material blueprint. The blueprint is not required of course, but it does allow a lot of individual controls. To start off with, I have just a simple tarnished wood that you can see right here. I have a simple metal that you can see right here. And I have a simple planks that we can see up here. Now this is just a three layer material. It's a very simple one. All these are doing is taking the actual mega scans textures and I'm just piping them into the base color, the roughness and the normal and the ambient occlusion. And I'm combining it all together. Now this is currently being combined in my case by using vertex paint. So I have taken this object, I have exported it. I painted the vertices so that way I have things in the red and green channel and then recombine them back. Now what I want to show is not only do we we have the ability to control this, right? You can just go in, you can tint things and you can change things in the material instance itself, but that's not really the strength of the system. The strength of the system comes from the ability to modify it in the blueprint. So if I have this selected, I have put in my mesh, I have placed in my material instance in here, I've specified there's three total layers, as you can see here, and I even put in the baked normal map that comes with this. Now I can of course crank this normal map stronger so you can really see the emphasis of it, or I can remove it entirely if I so wish. Now the system does take in a baked normal if you would like, as well as you can put in your baked diffuse, you can bake roughness, you can put all that in, but the real strength of it comes from tileable procedural textures and workflow. So that way you can reuse this on everything. And so it's not a per object texture. Baked normals, of course, when you have a sculpt are usually per object and I have exposed that in the blueprint itself. So you just pipe that one in directly. Once you have everything kind of plugged in, we have the ability to control our layers and our layer blends. And you can see automatically we have things populated. So if I want to change this metal here, this bar, I can open up my index one and here I can open my UV and I can just override the settings. And now I can go in and change the tiling of this. I can move things down if I don't like it, move things over. I can even rotate the entire thing. So for example, these planks on top, they're kind of going the wrong way. I'd want them to go the other way. So I can go ahead and open index two, which we can see is our planks because it goes zero, one, two. And in our planks, I can go open our UV controls, override them and set the rotation to 90 degrees. And just like that, we have our planks going the correct way. Now, if I come here, now we do have the planks kind of a little bit too wide here and then two half planks effectively on the sides. So I can go ahead and offset the V and just scooch this over. And now we have a much better setup. Now you can see this is slightly angled, it seems. So maybe something like a 89 degrees would probably be a little bit better. And you can play around with this and really get it to be kind of exactly where you want. And there you go. Now we have four planks on here. And of course, if I want to, I can now go ahead and tile this even more and have more or less planks on here. But just like that, we are able to control this instance. Now this one is unique. So if I select this, guy and I just make a copy here. This copy is unique. I can modify one of these guys without affecting the other. You can see I can just change the tiling on this one. I can make this one angled in this manner. So I can all of a sudden make variations on these. And this is just modifying the UVs. I can of course modify the base color. So I can override the base color. I can tint the entire thing or because it already has tint, I can just change the hue. I can just change offset the hue. I can change the contrast. I can change the gamma of it, offset the saturation. So you can all of a sudden and get a lot of variations of these just with these settings. Now, if you're here and you're enjoying it, consider hitting the like button and subscribe for more awesome stuff like this. Get back to it. So what can we do otherwise besides obviously changing the base color? Well, we could pretty much change whatever we want. We, if I collapse these, I have UV controls, all of the different setups here. So we can tweak the, the roughness. We can change the opacity if we want to have this as a transparent object. We can change all of these values dynamically. So you can change them in here in the material layer, of course, and this will affect every single copy of this. So if I was to tint these planks, the planks are tinted, but if I make a copy of this, it'll be tinted for all of them. But if I want to have it only a single one being tinted, then I can just go ahead and just overwrite a single plank to be tinted. And I have the same result, but now a lot more control. Why I have this as a layered set of instead of all being baked in. So because of these are all three separate materials, I can control what is what. So in my material layer blend, I can go ahead and open, for example, index two for my planks. Because again, this is where our planks are. And in here, I can open up my vertex color controls and I can overwrite them. So currently they're using the red channel of the vertex color. But if I want to, I can just reduce the intensity of them. So now 
it is still applying those planks, but it is blending with that background with this wood that I have below it. So I can change that. I can even change the channel of it. So now those planks are applied here because this is the green channel. And on the green channel, this is the section that I have. Of course, I can have it in both. I can just change it where both of these are now using these planks. So you have a lot of controls of what goes where. And if I want to, of course, I can disable entirely. So now I just have this metal bar in between, but otherwise it's just a nice polished wooden table. Let's go ahead and turn it back on. But other than that, I also have the ability to change how the material blends itself. So right now, normally when you have a layered material, you start with your base and then you have a few layers on top and the way they are blended is through just an opacity. Is it 1.0? Is it zero? Is it half? Do you want it in this spot or this spot? Basically that is just a simple A over B functionality. But what if you want more custom functionality in the blend? Let me show you. So here I can override the blend. So instead of my base color being the default blend, I can change it to a multiply. Overlay, soft light, add, subtract, minimal, maximum. I can tweak all of these. Instead of the original, it now has a few more setups. So you can have very interesting results by using this with maybe not necessarily a base texture, but maybe a pattern something. You can make embed different controls into it. And you can do this for the different stuff. So you can change the, override the roughness. You can change the roughness to be min or max. Right here, you can see the roughness being changed. So if I want it to be the minimum roughness, no matter which material it's using, I can go with minimum. So it's always like metallic. I can have it be a non-metallic if it's uh, kind of the wood underneath. So I have a lot of control over this. And again, if I want to override it, I can. It's overriding the settings from the material instance. If I don't, then it just keeps what it's there. But if I open up any one of these and I look at the blend stuff, I have the option for 3D noise, falloffs, RGB masks, height blends, Fresnel's actual lighting masks. So like a point light, spotlight, and even directional light as masks. That way, when you have something in world space and you just have it go through like a point light area, it changes the material. So you can have something that transitions from being like decrepit and as it goes into the light it becomes more vibrant by actually revealing some of that nice greenery you have also a sub mask which is basically just a sub rgb mask it is also the same functionality as rgb mask you have the world height gradient maybe for something like a tree where you have a dark roots on the base and becomes more vibrant as it goes up you can have that with a, just a simple gradient you of course have triplanar and vertex paint as i've been demonstrating here and of course we can't have all of this without the ability to change the blending control so right now if I was to go under these planks and I wanted to change my blending control, what this does is it disables what I'm blending. So if I turned on everything except base color here, if I enabled the overrides and then I unchecked these on the right, what this is doing is it is now disabling the blend on everything except base color. It is maintaining the roughness and every other information except base color. So if I turned off base color, you'll see it's gone. It's entirely gone. It's not blending anything. But if I only want to blend the normal, then I only have the normal information. Now the normal information for this is pretty soft. So what I can do is go under index two, go under normal controls. I can override normal and I can just pump the normal strength to be considerably higher. And you can see the normal is popping up there. And of course, I'm cranking this way higher than it should be. But you can see there's the plank normal being applied here. If I do a lower number, you can see here's the actual plank normals, but it's not applying any other information. So if you wanted to, you could have a detailed normal or deep tail texture that is just doing the normal map, the metallic, the emissive. You don't actually need to blend the entire layer. You can blend just the sections you want just the normal map, just the base color. You have so much control because of that. And keep in mind, this material can be reused on anything in the entire project that is using those same materials. So anything else that is using that same type of metal, same plank, same wood in this entire world can use this base material. I don't have to make 20 different materials for the 20 different objects. I can reuse them and then when I export in the setup, I can just assign a different section for vertex paint on this section, the vertex paint on this section, and automatically effectively assign different materials onto all the objects with just a simple single layered material. One other benefit to disabling the ones you don't need is actually the ability to reduce the instructions that are needed for the setup. The beauty of the setup, it might have all of the stuff here. It might have a lot of controls and a lot of things that you want. But if you don't want something, if you don't want the extra functionality of something, you can just disable it. If I don't have 
gray base color here turned on, then I don't even enable the base color functionality in here. So if I come back to the layer controls under base color controls, I can change this all I want. It's not going to do anything because I've disabled the ability to grade it. But as soon as I re-enable it, you can see it becomes enabled. I want to give a big thank you to the patrons that help support what I do, as well as the community in general. You guys have been super supporting. I appreciate you so much. And if you'd like to join the community, the link to the Discord is always in the description down below. Feel free to hop in and join us at any time. Let's get back to it. And of course, all of these actually stack. So if you wanted to have a noise with something else, if I want to, I can turn on noise breakup here. And now along with that texture, you could see now it is using a noise on top of it. So I can change the contrast and let's pump up the contrast really high. And you can see now it has this splotchy pattern on top of it where the planks are and of course change the scale and everything and while this is good right because it's now enabled here i can go under the blend controls i can go into noise controls and overwrite them so now i could just set it dynamically for this object and i can change the scale and everything for here and there you go now i have this new design that now i've enabled with the noise and it's still doing the actual vertex paint from below because as you can see it is only affecting the stop area it's not affecting everything so it's combining it with the vertex paint everything here stacks together making it a lot more powerful than any one thing and if you're wondering why i chose vertex paint for this it's simple we now have up to five layers that we can create out of anything using this setup because we have the base and then we have the rgba of the vertex paint that we can use as material IDs for the setup. So you can take a bunch of different objects that, are, that don't have a layered setup, convert the materials into vertex paint, and then use that in a layered setup to have a lot of control all of a sudden to get a lot of interesting variation. And then combine that with decals, you all of a sudden can get as much variation and detail as you possibly can imagine. The current plan is to bring this setup sometime to you in early 2024. Of course, I need to wait for my computer to come back from RMA as this current one struggles with how advanced it is and how big this setup is. So once it is back, I'll go ahead and finish it up. But if there's anything you would like to see me add to the system, please let me know. Other than that, if you're interested to know more and see more features of the system, check out this video right here where I showed a slightly previous version of it and some other things that I didn't cover today.